In this HVACR training video, we're going over four scenarios on checking the refrigerant charge on this R22 air conditioning system. We're going to be using the subcooling method because this system has a thermostatic expansion valve at the indoor unit. Now we're going to assume that we already checked the airflow and that's correct. And I'm going to explain the first scenario and compare the actual subcoin to the target subcoin to determine if it's undercharged, correctly charged, or overcharged. And in scenarios two, three, and four, you can pause the video and solve those on your own. We have our blue gauge connected to the large vapor line, and that's the low pressure side of the system. And then we have our red gauge connected to the small liquid line, and that's the high pressure side of the system. We also have our temp meter with our temp sensors mounted on both the vapor line and the liquid line. Because we're using the subcoin method, we're going to be paying attention to the red gauge and the temperature on that small liquid line. In scenario one, we read a pressure of 227 PSI, and we convert that to an R22 saturated temperature of 110 degrees. We can do that using an app, a calculator, or the gauge face. In this case, we're using a gauge face, so we have 110 degrees sat temp, and then we have a liquid line temp of 99 degrees, so we take 110 minus 99, and we're left with 11 degrees of actual subcooling. Now we need to determine what the target subcooling is, and we can find that up on the rating plate of this unit. So now we need to compare our actual subcooling to our target subcooling. And in order to find that, we look at the outdoor unit rating plate, and typically there's going to be an average target subcooling posted there. And in this case, it's 10 degrees. So we just need to be plus or minus three degrees away from our target, which is 10 degrees. So if we had an actual subcooling of 13 degrees or 7 degrees, we would technically still be accurately charged. But since we have an actual subcooling of 11 degrees, we're only one degree higher than the target, so we are accurately charged. So the long and short of this is if you have too low of a subcoin, you're undercharged. And if you have too high of a subcoin, you're overcharged. In scenario two, we have a pressure of 200 PSI on the red gauge, and we have a liquid line temperature of 97 degrees. If you're going to solve this on your own, pause the video now. Okay, so on the red gauge, we have a pressure of 200 PSI. We convert that to the R22 saturated temperature of 101 degrees and we have a liquid line temperature of 97 degrees. So we take 101 minus 97, and we're left with an actual subcoin of four degrees. Our actual subcoin is six degrees lower than our target subcoin of 10. So we know that we're undercharged because our subcoin measurement is too low. In this case, we would need to search for a refrigerant leak on the system and fix that. If we were going to add refrigerant into this system in order to increase the subcoin, we would need to do that into the large vapor line via the access port. In scenario three, we have a pressure on the red gauge of 185 PSI, and we have a liquid line temperature of 84 degrees. If you're going to solve this on your own, pause the video now. Okay, so on the red gauge, we have a pressure of 185 PSI. We convert that to an R22 saturated temperature of 96 degrees and we have a liquid line temperature of 84 degrees. So we take 96 minus 84, and we're left with an actual subcooling of 12 degrees. So because we have two degrees more than our target of 10, we know that we are accurately charged because we're within that plus or minus three degrees of our target. In scenario four, we have a pressure on the red gauge of 235 PSI. We have a liquid line temperature of 92 degrees. If you're gonna solve this on your own, pause the video now. Okay, so our pressure of 235 PSI gets converted to the R22 saturated temperature of 112 degrees. Our liquid line temperature is 92 degrees. So we take 112 degrees minus 92, and we're left with an actual subcoin of 20 degrees. Now, 20 degrees is 10 degrees higher of a subcoin than what our target is. So we know that we're overcharged. If we're overcharged, we can recover some of the refrigerant out of the system via the small liquid line access port, and we will recover that into a recovery bottle a little at a time in order to lower the subcoin down to what the target subcoin is. Now we've gone over these four scenarios, but anytime we're checking the refrigerant charge of a system with a TXV, even though we check it with subcoin on the red gauge and the temperature on the liquid line, we still need to check the total superheat on the blue gauge and also the temperature on the large vapor line. We need to do that to make sure that the TXV is doing its job properly. So in this case, we have a pressure of 74 PSI, and we convert that to a saturated temperature for R22 of 43 degrees. 
On our vapor line, we have a temperature of 55 degrees. So total superheat is the line temp minus the sat temp, so we take 55 degrees minus 43, and we're left with a total superheat of 12 degrees. So the TXV's job is to maintain a superheat of somewhere between, say, 8 to 16 degrees of superheat across that indoor coil. So we know that this TXV is doing its job properly, and even if you have a system that's overcharged, the TXV will try to hold the superheat correctly. If it's severely undercharged, the TXV will not be able to hold that superheat steady because there's not enough refrigerant in the system. If you want to learn more about checking the refrigerant charge, the undercharge, overcharged, or liquid line restrictions, or low indoor airflow, or any of those other scenarios, make sure you check out our Refrigerant Charging and Service Procedures for Air Conditioning book. We have the full outline over at acservicetech.com slash acbook. We also have a thousand question workbook for you to review on your own and check your own answers. And we also have quick reference cards that you can use out in the field right in front of the unit while you're charging or diagnosing. We have all these resources over at acservicetech.com and also on Amazon. We have our ebook over at iTunes, Google Play, and also at our website. Remember that we have all these free resources such as the calculators, quizzes, the podcasts, the articles over at our website at acservicetech.com. Hope you enjoyed yourself. We'll see you next time at AC Service Tech Channel.